this was uh, two years ago. I said it was going to close out 2020 at 28,000. So that looks pretty good. Let me tell you what's really going on. For, you had to compare it to what happened back in 1992 when George Soros attacked the British pound and the Bank of England. And he broke the Bank of England, if you recall, and he made a quick billion dollars. Stan Druckenmiller was the architect of that. And right now, what we're seeing is a similar thing going on with Bitcoin. And what Michael Saylor figured out, and now possibly Elon Musk and others, I think Larry Ellison's going to get involved, is that they have the Federal Reserve Bank and other central banks in a very precarious position. because those banks have artificially pushed interest rates down to these extraordinary levels of uh, almost zero. And it, so, uh, and if they can borrow as Saylor did at 75 basis points just now for 650 million and uh, buy Bitcoin, uh, they are in a position of a speculative attack on the Federal Reserve Bank. Make no mistake about this. Michael Saylor and the Bitcoiners are attacking the Federal Reserve Bank uh, and the global central banking system as Soros did to the Bank of England. That's kind of the template that's being used globally. That's the inside ball. That's why Bitcoin, you could very easily see it trade to two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a coin pretty quickly because the central banks have left themselves open to this arbitrage, to this attack. And it's on, you know, the game is on now and no, no one is uh, pretending that this is not happening anymore. Uh, the dollar, the yen, the euro. It, they are all uh, basically fiat currency, centrally controlled. They don't compete with Bitcoin. They're centrally controlled um, and they are analogous to fiat money. They have nothing to do with Bitcoin, which is decentralized and it has uh, security features that none of those centralized coins would ever have. So it doesn't compete um, with uh, Bitcoin. The only way the central banks can stop the speculative attack aimed at destroying the central banks and I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some harsh reality here, but you know, people should take this on board because a world, we're entering into a world post central banks here is the only way they can defend against, against this is to raise interest rates. And uh, they're not gonna do that. I mean, the bet is that Jerome Powell and these other banks are not gonna raise rates. That's, that's the bet on Bitcoin right now. That's the multi hundred trillion dollar bet being made on Bitcoin right now, that the banks, central banks will not raise rates. And as long as they keep, lowering rates and as long as rates keep going negative then the bitcoin trade is an asymmetric bet it's a one-way bet and it's it's got almost virtually no top i mean you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin or higher even you know jp morgan just came out with an estimate of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars per bitcoin citibank is estimating three hundred thousand per bitcoin so they i think they kind of see what's happening here they want to get ahead of it they want some exposure to it but nothing's going to stop this now. Uh, the central banks, they thought they had the game completely rigged with their collusion. The global banks all working together to keep, not only to keep fiat money viable beyond its uh, term, but uh, to attack uh, gold, as we know. You know, JP Morgan, how many fines did they pay for gold manipulation? Numerable, innumerable fines. And uh, we see that in all the big banks, the bullion banks. And, and they thought they had it made. They thought that they would escape. but. Michael Saylor and others figured out that they've got this vulnerability and uh, the game is on. I, I, I really, I got into Bitcoin as part of my efforts, you know, with Stacy going back many years now. The global insurrection against banker occupation is what we called it. You know, we, we've talked about the dangers of fiat money and central banking for a number of years. And Bitcoin was obvious to me back in 2011 that this could be a, an escape route. And now um, we've got the likes of Michael Saylor, possibly Elon Musk, Paul Tudor Jones over there in, in his hedge fund. He's he's now piling on. Uh, I would Stan Druckenmiller, the architect of the Bank of England raid, is made positive comments on Bitcoin. Uh, Ray Dalio was a was a, a skeptic. Now he's kind of neutral. I think Ray Dalio will be put 10, 20 percent of his portfolio into Bitcoin in the next few months. But particularly since his performance has been pretty bad for 2020, he needs to get back in the race here. He needs to, he needs something, some alpha. He, Ray needs alpha. The acceptance by mainstream Wall Street, you know, Wall Street is sells products, right? And um, they are part of the distribution, but they're not the key decision makers so much. I mean, not not the vast 
army of brokers out there. Um, but people who put their uh, the, the $1,200 relief check in, in Bitcoin, right. I think are close to tripled their money already. You know, I mean, the average investor is got the buying power. But you know, I mean, when I was working on Wall Street in the 1980s, you know, you had a shift to the institutions. You know, there the, uh, the, the price discovery is in the institutional level. You know, the retail trader is not driving price discovery. It's the institutional money that's driving price discovery. And the institutional money is, on, is, is figured out that they've got a one-way bet here. And so, and they've got un, um, virtually unlimited buying power because the central banks have made the cost of money virtually nothing. So what Saylor did was, and I got to give it to, to Saylor, I got to hand it to him. He could have taken the easy route and simply borrowed a lot of money and bought back his own stock. He would have made a ton of money. But instead he thought, you know what, as an engineer, as a rocket scientist, and as a deep thinker, I, you know, I figured out what these cyber hornets, as he call, calls uh, the Bitcoiners, I figured, I, I understand what they're saying here, that there's a vector out of the central bank collusion that's destroying the, been destroying the world. And I can make 10, 20, 30 times what I would have made had I been buying back my own stock. Now, you know, the mercenaries that run these big companies like Apple or other companies with huge cash positions, they're not going to, or Jeff Bezos, you know, they're not going to sit back and watch Michael Saylor get richer than them, right? Saylor could be richer than Bezos if this works. And Bezos is not going to sit back and say, oh, jolly good. He's a wonderful chap. Good luck to you, matey. No, he's going to be like, I don't want somebody else being richer than me. And Larry Ellison doesn't want anyone being richer than him. Elon Musk, right? So they're like, wait a minute, we got to get in on this trade. So there's just a huge rush by institutional money. Whether the retail person or the average person figures it out uh, or they get involved, it doesn't matter. You know, they, they're not a factor at all. You know, America is run by a clique of uh, super billionaires and uh, you have to understand what they're doing. For me, I got it in 2011. Uh, Michael Saylor was uh, looked at it in 2013. He didn't understand it. it. It took him five or six years to really figure it out. We've got Elon Musk is now looking at it, and because he's a smart guy, he'll the, he'll get orange pilled, as we call it, and he, he'll understand what's going on here, and he'll jump in. Peter Schiff, you know, he's in he's in denial basically. He's a he's a fiat money addict, and like a heroin addict or a drug addict. You, you can't do anything about it until Peter Schiff bottoms. See, until he hits fiat money bottom, he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to help himself. And there's nothing anyone can do to help Peter Schiff. You know, he has to he has to hit bottom. He has to realize he's been dead wrong for the 10 years I've been telling him to buy Bitcoin since it was a dollar. I was at his house in Westport, Connecticut, over Christmas a few years ago when it was under a hundred dollars. I begged him and his son, uh, to uh, who heard about it, who's now buying Bitcoin. Uh, and I told him to buy it a thousand. I've been telling him to buy it for ten years, uh, but he's uh, he's he's not. He hasn't hit bottom yet, and it's very very sad uh, to see somebody like that destroy their life, uh, destroy uh, their career. Uh, but that's some people are they they just can't get it.